This week, the Joey 10% to the big guy. I'm Jill Biden's husband. Where am I right now? I can't answer a question. Joey Waffle Cone, what flavor of ice cream? Chocolate, chocolate chip. I buy, buy, buy. Administration approved the largest increase to food stamps ever. This 25% increase represents the largest boost in the program's history. And according to Joey Waffle Cone, or at least the people who handle him, that this is supposed to reflect the true cost of a basic healthy diet. Oh, now there's a couple ways to look at this increase in food stamp benefits. Number one, increasing the value of food stamps is essentially giving something as good as money. Because even though new money is not being printed as a result of this food stamp assistance going up, these vouchers are just as good as cash. When, the, when somebody gives a voucher to a grocery store or a food provider, they can redeem it for cash. So it's basically printing money out of thin air without actually printing it. So a country that's $28 trillion in debt that's increasing this program by 25%, where are they gonna pay for that? How are they gonna pay for that? You know how they're gonna pay for that? The Federal Reserve Bank is gonna need to print more money to cover this additional expense. Meanwhile, they're already printing trillions of dollars for a whole variety of other handouts and government programs. More money printed out of thin air, what is the result? One might suggest that this is an acknowledgement of the insane inflation and price increases that are happening for basic consumer goods. And since this money is being, again, printed out of thin air, created out of nothingness and used to buy those basic consumer goods without any additional productivity or production, this again is yet another inflationary moment. This is more inflation. If the same person that is not producing anything now has to bid on that same box of crackers, the price of the crackers has to go up because more people are not producing additional crackers. All there are are additional dollars to buy them. Economist Peter Schiff gave a really good example on his podcast yesterday where he basically explained this SNAP assistance, food stamp assistance program like so. Let's pretend that your job is to produce crackers. Every day you go to work, you produce boxes of crackers, you place the crackers in the bag, and then in exchange you get cash. Somebody else is out on a boat, they go to work every day, they catch fish. They take the fish, they put them in the bag. In exchange for putting fish in the bag, they get money. You go and produce the crackers, you put them in the bag, you go and reach in the bag, you take out a fish. You produced in exchange for something that somebody else produced. Well, if you haven't been going to work and you haven't been producing any crackers, you've just been getting cash paid to you by the government for no productivity, for no output, more people are reaching in the bag without people putting things into the bag. There's no additional production. There's just more people grabbing at the limited amount of items in the bag. As a result, the demand for the items that are in the bag is so high because nobody's putting in, but everybody's trying to take out. As a result of the increased demand, the prices for those goods go up. And since you've been getting money for nothing and not having to work for it, for it and not having to produce anything, the value of those dollars, even to you because you didn't do anything to create them, is lower. So you're willing to pay the higher price. Also, you have no choice because the items are limited and you need them to survive. Aside from the fact that this, again, creates more inflation, which is just a tax on the money that you already have, because, of course, they're not increasing any taxes to pay for these additional benefits. House Democrats on the Agricultural Committee's subcommittee overseeing nutrition said that this is, an, this is a critically important step towards ensuring that the SNAP benefits adequately support a nutritious diet. Oh, a nutritious diet, you say? So remember the nutritious diet. The things that these food stamps can be redeemed for are quite interesting. First, you can't buy any non-food grocery items. You can't buy any paper supplies, any cleaning supplies, or any hygiene supplies like soaps, deodorants, shampoos, toothpaste, or feminine products. They want you to be healthy, but you also can't buy vitamins, supplements, or any medicines over the counter or prescription. Vitamins and supplements seem pretty crucial to your health. Same with soap and toothpaste, but okay. But you can buy some energy drinks, 
Red Bull, Monster, sugar and chemical loaded torpedoes that probably have absolutely no health benefit whatsoever. And they're expensive. And if you choose an energy drink that has any vitamin or supplement added to it, it's considered it's considered medicine or supplements and therefore you can't buy it. So you can only buy the unhealthy garbagey ones. All right. And naturally, they want to keep you healthy so you can buy junk food, including chips, candy, snack crackers, ice cream, and soft drinks. So you could buy a two liter bottle of Dr. Pepper, M&Ms, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, Mike and Ike's, a can of Sprite, gummy bears, a Snickers, but you can't buy vitamin C? Cool. So you can't buy any hot prepared food because of course the convenience comes at an extra cost, which counts out rotisserie chickens, shrimp and seafood, stews, soups and chili, or anything that would be consumed on premises or immediately. But you can go to a fast food restaurant and buy garbage. SNAP recipients are oftentimes elderly people or homeless people that lack the ability to store food. So eating prepared food or hot food sometimes is a necessity. So of course, they'll let you use your SNAP benefits at fast food establishments like Burger King, Denny's, Domino's Pizza, Popeye's, El Pollo Loco, and Subway. Garbage. And because this malarkey has absolutely nothing to do with your health if you just open your ojos and look, you know what else you can buy as part of your healthy diet? A cake. You can purchase a cake. And because we wouldn't want you to miss celebrating your birthday as you starve, you can go ahead and buy that cake. And you can also buy non-edible decorations as long as they don't exceed 50% of the cost of the cake. So you could buy a freaking balloon. Oh man. Now before you go and think, hey, what do you have a problem with people eating? Do you want these people to starve? My problem is not with the existence of the program. What I'm saying is not that this is, that I want to be evil and I want people to starve. I'm just saying this is an inflationary tax. This develops more dependence on the government structure. And this is another, this is yet another step towards socialism and total government dependence. The SNAP program only cost the United States $79 billion in 2020. However, in 2019, it only cost $60 billion. So how much is that going to go up now that they just put in a 25% permanent increase? The chart looks like the following. This is the chart starting in 1969, which coincidentally is right when we went off the gold standard and started our inflationary print till forever. Look how this chart's going up. In 2017 billion up to 79 billion in 2020. Now I just want you to put this into perspective. This entire program costs $79 million for an entire year, right? And here they are not allowing people to buy things like toothpaste or vitamin C, but they can go and buy a candy bar or they can go and buy Burger King, right? $79 billion, remember that number. In the 20 years since September 11th, 2001, the United States of America has spent $300 million a day, every day, for 20 years, on the war in Afghanistan, 300 million a day, every day for 20 years. Now, when I first heard that number, I was like, wait a second, $300 million a day, true trillion, something sounds off, what am I miscalculating? I was today years old when I realized that $2 trillion is 2 million millions, 2 million millions, wow. So as they nickel and dime these people and allow them to buy sugary soft drinks and garbage candy and Burger King, instead of being able to buy things like fish or soup or other hot prepared foods or vitamin C or things that would help them actually stay healthy or diapers or soap or deodorant, they are blowing $50,000 per Afghani citizen. That's like... The amount of money, the amount of loss, and to see that we just lost it all in a matter of days. There is something very important that we all understand about what we're looking at. Everybody needs to understand is no matter how virtuous or how empathetic or how caring you think they are about you, these people do not care about 
you. They don't care about us. It's not about what you say. It's about what you do. And their actions and their execution is garbage. And how more people could think that we need to just vote these people in and clap our hands and celebrate them. And it's left, it's right, it's Donnie, it's Joe. Don't you see? They don't care. They are destroying everything and, it, and no one even sees it. And here we are battling with each other over inconsequential nothingness as they're letting people starve and eat sugary garbage drinks as we blow trillions of dollars overseas. And who benefits from it all? Who benefits? The military industrial complex and the people that really have the power and run the world. And you're gonna sit there and yell at your neighbor because they won't put a diaper on or they didn't listen to what Stephen Colbert or John Oliver or any of one of these corporate paid for, bought and paid for shills say on TV about how they should treat their own body, their own health, their own children. And this is happening at scale around the entire world. And here they are blowing $300 million a day in Afghanistan, but not helping people eat healthy food here in the homeland. And you're gonna suddenly believe Believe them now about this, about all these tests and about what you got to do as you hate your neighbor? Are you joking? Pay attention! Because the true story, the untold story, what will be documented in history for a lifetime is how you behaved and reacted at this very crucial moment. Because there's a lot of well-meaning people, there's a lot of veterans, there's a lot of patriots, there's a lot of people who do research who love America, that are trying to tell you what's going on. And the vast majority of people don't care, don't pay attention, and watch CNN to get their viewpoint on the world. You're clueless and they are emotionally manipulating you. It is time for you to start waking up. And if they're going to start telling you that doing research is somehow bad. Oh, would you do your own research? Yeah, you piece of garbage. I did my own research. When I was a junior in high school, before the football season started, my coach was riding me, riding me at practice, trying to get me to work harder, work harder. And I was like, coach. Why are you always on my back, dude? Why are you riding me so much? And what he said to me was something I will never forget as long as I live. He said that he was putting the pressure on me because he knew that I had the capacity to be better, to be greater at my position. He said, what you really have to worry about is when I don't say anything, when I leave you alone. Because that means I've given up. What people fail to realize is that people who love America care about their fellow brothers and sisters, not just in America, but in the world at large. We have a deep love and care for people, for the world, for the future, for everyone around us. We don't look at it like government. We don't look at it like red, blue. We look at it like freedom. We look at it like people. We look at it like America. We look at it like human beings. And as people somehow defend this regime without understanding the depth of how they are defending someone and defending a faction that does not care and is not in their best interest, what we all wish they would understand is that you are stuck and trapped defending an emotionally manipulative relationship because what we all care about people that are trying to sound the alarm people that are trying to spread love for people they understand that a centralized structure a centralized focus amount of power and people that have demonstrably not cared about the good of people will not stand we need to stand the power needs to be in our hands We all need to understand that we're on the same team and the power structures are not on that same team. This does not mean I'm anti-government. This does not mean I'm anti-juice. This does not mean I'm anti-anything. What it means is that I'm pro the people. I believe in government, a government for the people and by the people that looks out for the people's best interests. But when the power gets out of control, when they take advantage of it, and then you have really bad actors manipulating it for their own benefit, that's when you have to rein it back. That's when you have to put the power back into the hands of the people. And in this particular particular instance, the only way to do that is through awareness, by stopping giving up more of your powers and freedoms to this structure that is hell-bent on stealing them and exercising power indefinitely. It has to come back to all of our awareness and understanding that we're on the same team. That's the first step. That's the last step. That's the game. It should be for the people and by the people. 
all the way through. And together we can do that if only we could be aware.